Hello. I'm going to cook some yummy recipes. All right. Well, you heard us both say that we're registered dietitians. Does anyone know what that is? Raise your hand for us if, you, if you've heard of a registered dietitian before. No one. Or if you don't want to raise your hand, you can do the little reaction at the bottom and give us a thumbs up or a clappy sign, whatever you want to do. Okay. Oh, well, Lexi's heard of a registered dietitian. That's no surprise, right? So a registered dietitian is an expert in nutrition. To become a registered dietitian, you would have to get an undergrad degree, and then you also have to get a master's degree. And one more part, you have to do internship hours with dietitians that are already in practice. Now, I will say about this field, you do really need to love science if you are interested in becoming a registered dietitian because you have to take some really hard classes like organic chemistry and biochem, all sorts of things like that. Now, why we love this field, I'll say, one of the reasons why we love this field is because there are so many different careers you can do. So you can be a clinical dietitian where you work in a hospital or outpatient. You can be a sports dietitian where you work with athletes and you can even be paired up with like a professional um, athletic team. You can do community nutrition where you work with food banks or nonprofits. And food service is the one where we do a lot of work. So you can work in with school food service or hospital food service or teach people things about culinary skills and nutrition in general. So it's a really, really good field um, and something we would love for y'all to look more into and consider doing. So just a little bit about our company real quick. We are a culinary nutrition company. So we're founded on the, on the belief and the foundation that the best way to take control of your health is through cooking. And we think that everyone can cook. Have y'all seen the movie Ratatouille? Y'all remember the movie Ratatouille? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that's what they said, right? Anybody can cook. And that's exactly what we think. So along with these different nutrition ed sessions, there'll be some cooking demos that are going to be coming up as well that will correspond with what we're teaching you today. Okay. Oh, and I forgot to say, so if y'all could go ahead in the chat box, type your name for us, your first and last name. So you already know who we are. So we want to know who's in the room. And we also want to make sure we get credit for being here today. So can everyone do that right now? Got a couple in there. Got a couple. Keep them coming, guys. We want to make sure we have everyone in there. How's it looking, Lexi? Um, we're getting there. I think we're at about halfway. Okay. So if you haven't typed yet, go ahead and do that. Yeah, if you're just coming in, we, we just want you to type your name in the chat box so we can make sure to give you credit and so we know your names and who's here. Okay. Well, y'all ready? It's time for a pre-test. Well, don't get scared. Don't get, no one likes that word test. I know. This is just, just to see what you know now and to make sure you learn something during our lesson, right? So Lexi is going to put up a pre-test for y'all. And don't overthink these questions. We just want y'all to answer all of them. Okay? Here it comes. All right. Does everyone see that on their screen? Give me a thumbs up. See that? All right. Answer those questions for us. No, I don't see it, so that's kind of funny. Oh, weird. <laughs> Lexi, let me know when they're um, when the poll's done. I don't see it. Oh, I don't see the poll. You don't? Yeah. We saw it at first, and then it went away. Oh no! Oh, you know what? I see it. Yeah, it says launch poll again. Should I hit it? Oh, weird. I still have it going on my end. No one sees it? Whitney sees it. I was able to answer all the questions. Maybe I was the only one. Maybe I answered for everyone. No. <laughs> <laughs> I've had four people who have submitted their answers. You might have to go like maybe to the bottom of your screen where it says polling maybe to pull it up. You see that? No? I've had half the room answer. Oh, okay, good. Like I said, don't overthink it. Just, just answer the questions. We're going to talk about all of them. So you'll, you'll know the right answers at the end. It's a fun test. Is it really a fun test? I don't know. Probably not, huh? All right, we're getting there. 
We're about two thirds of the way through. Just a few more seconds for those of you who haven't finished answering. See, are we still working on it? Okay, I'll get, get your answers in and then Lexi, let's go ahead and let's start. Okay. So right. Let's start talking about my plate. So Lexi is going to show y'all an image in just a second. <laughs> you have to bear with us. This is our first one, right? We'll get, we'll get better as these go on. <laughs> yes. All right. Okay. Here it comes. All right. Can y'all see that? Yeah. Thumbs up. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let's take a look at um, this image or this graphic, I should say. So this is called My Plate. And I'm guessing a lot of you have maybe seen this before in at school at some point or maybe in your cafeteria. But My Plate is a great visual and it guides us how to make healthy choices, right? So it shows us what to eat and how much to eat. And what it's displaying are the five different food groups. So we have fruits, vegetables, grains, protein, and dairy. So what we want to do now is have you draw, we're going to call it your plate instead of my plate. Sorry, bad joke, I know. So go ahead, did everyone get a piece of paper or a paper plate and something to write with? Y'all have it? Yeah? Okay, let me get mine. You have to forgive, some reason I have a brown marker, I thought it was black, but what we're going to do is we're going to draw my plate. So that way you have this visual once this presentation is done. And of course you can Google it and find it yourself, but um, we thought this would be a good thing to do. And we're probably going to use it depending on time later in this lesson for an activity. So go ahead, if you have a blank piece of paper, draw that circle for my plate. So I'm going to do it too with you guys. Don't judge my circle. It was a terrible circle. Okay. Oh no, my white screen. There you go. So I have a circle. If you have a paper plate, you don't need to draw a circle, right? It's all, you already got that. Now draw a line vertically down the middle. Like that. Everyone got it? And you can also just kind of look at the image on the screen and try to, try to copy that. Now on the right side, we're gonna almost divide it evenly in half, but the top part needs to be a little bigger. Okay, my circle looks so terrible. <laughs> and then on the other side, we're gonna kind of do the opposite. So we're gonna divide it where about probably like one third towards the top and two thirds towards the bottom. So you should have something that looks sort of like this. Hold it up for us when you're done. So we can see. Oh, look at that tiny little index card. Good, that's better than mine. I'm looking at Alyssa, Aly Alyssa's. <laughs> Hold them up for us. We want to make sure you got it. Lexi, can you see them all? I actually can't see everyone right now with my view. Um, I'm scrolling through. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay. We've got a good one. Let's see. I can't see everyone's names when I'm scrolling through, but got a couple holding them up. Looking good, guys. Awesome. Okay, so the, the last part would be a circle on the side of the plate. If you have a paper plate, just draw your circle on the back. So all of us with paper, though, we're going to draw it on the side. Uh, sorry about that white screen, it's crazy. Okay, so now that we have our plates, if you want, you can go ahead and write in the food groups, but don't put it like in the middle of the plate because we are gonna use these later. So let me show you. So I'm gonna write grains and protein real quick and see how I, uh, <laughs> see how I left room because we're hopefully gonna get to an activity where you get to draw on these plates. So leave room to draw. But if you wanna go ahead and label those five food groups, That'll make it um, easier and there'll be a better visual for you later. So fruits, vegetables, grains, protein, and dairy. Okay, good job, everyone. Your plates look better than mine. I tried. So while y'all are finishing up, let's just, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about my plate, just some things that kind of stand out. So normally when we give these presentations, the thing that really pops out at people is that fruits and vegetables cover half the plate. That's not how most Americans eat, right? 
not very common. And this is at every single meal. So my plate is used for all meals, right? And so fruits and vegetables should cover half. I think the other thing that normally stands out to people is that the grains group is larger than the protein group. You all notice that? That a lot of times kind of confuses people. Oh, yeah. Did someone have a question? I heard, I heard a microphone. No? Okay. So it's a great visual again, showing us the five group, five food groups and then how much to eat of those different food groups. So one thing to note, this plate really makes it look like you need to have like your grains in one corner, your protein separate in another corner and the vegetables and the fruit and the dairy, right? That's not how our meals typically look. It, they might. I mean, I guess that's like a standard American meal, maybe. But a lot of us like to eat meals. I'm going to call them like mixed up, right? It's like a stir fry. Everything's together. Or in this example, we have a bean burrito dinner, right? Or bean taco. So the protein and grain are kind of together, right? And we have the fruits and vegetables separate. And then the dairy is not like in a little cup. We have it sprinkled on top. So my plate is a great visual, but know that it doesn't have to be like we build your meals in those different compartments. That's not something that's super necessary to do. You're just trying to get all those food groups. And I should, with that said, you don't necessarily have to have every food group at every meal. You do always wanna make sure you have half your plate in fruits and vegetables. Let's say it's breakfast time. You might not, vegetables might not make sense, right? With the meal you're eating, but you can cover half your plate in fruit. So just something, something to think about. Now, you might be wondering, why does it matter? Why do I have to eat healthy? I'm young, doesn't affect me, you know, I, I've got years to worry about this. The thing is, it's so important to start healthy eating habits when you're young because they carry through with you as an adult and they will help you to grow healthier and stronger. And one of the great things about eating healthy is that it gives you energy. So, energy to think better in school, energy just to move more. So if you do any sort of physical activity or sports, if you eat healthy, you'll have more energy to accomplish that. So eating healthy is just super important for you at this age and throughout your life. So we really encourage you to start now. So let's take a look now at this other kind of plate. This is called the Harvard Healthy Eating Plate. So this plate was created um, kind of in response to my plate by, by Harvard, Harvard Medical School. And our company actually, so Lexi and I, we actually like this plate a little better than my plate because it gives more details and there's some more information on there. But you're not gonna see this one as often. So my plate is the guidelines that come out from the United States Department of Agriculture. So our government supports my plate. So, as a visual, like in school or again, like the cafeteria, you're gonna see the my plate image. But I want you to take, at, take a look at this plate and we're gonna do a side-by-side -side image for you. Let's do a comparison. So we want you to tell us, what do you see that's different between the Harvard Healthy Eating Plate and my plate? Go ahead and, go ahead and type in the chat box. So let's see what you come up with. And Lexi, as their answers come in, can you just read them out loud? Yeah. All right, what are the differences here? What do y'all notice? There's quite a few, really. Okay, Whitney said there's no dairy on the Harvard plate. Yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of hidden. It's there with the water cup. But you're right, it's not like it's separate food group. Very good. Oh, I'm seeing the pop-ups at the bottom, I just noticed. Vegetables and fruits are switched. Mm -hmm. Oh, perfect follow-up. And one has more vegetables. <laughs> yeah. So in my plate, the fruits and vegetables, the vegetables is still larger than fruits, but in the Harvard plate, the vegetables become even that much bigger than the fruit section. Great job. Oh, what did Eva say? It cut off for me. It says the Harvard plate has a better description than the my plate. Yes, that's one of the reasons why we really love it. Because when you just look at my plate, you're like, Okay, that's great. It's the five food groups and I see the proportions, but what's in those five food groups and what am I supposed to eat? Okay, great answers, everyone. So Lexi's going to cut, oh, I just saw healthy oil, another good one. Yep, that was left off of my plate. Yeah, so Lexi's going to circle all those differences for us. So y'all pretty much got, well, I don't know if anyone talked about the whole grains and healthy protein. It might have been in the chat, but we covered everything else, really. 
the water was there instead of dairy. And there is a note there that you can still, you can still have dairy, one to two servings a day. They just wanted to make the point that you really need water with every, I mean, essentially with every meal and then throughout the day. You notice the grains and protein. <laughs> Someone just said I was gonna say there was, Emily said I was gonna say there was water. Yes, very good. So the grains and the protein, it says whole grains, right? And we'll talk about that more in just a second. And then healthy protein. So being a little more specific. We already pointed out the fruits and vegetables, the difference there, and the healthy oils. And then that last thing, did anyone get that? The staying active? Did you catch that in the bottom corner? Did we get anyone, Lexi? I don't think anyone caught that one. No, I was gonna do the little <laughs> coffee emoji thing. Um, <laughs> so the Harvard Healthy Plate actually says to stay active, right? Because that's very important. Eating healthy and physical activity go hand in hand. You need to do both to be overall healthy. Awesome job, guys. Okay, oops, thank you for good glasses thinking. So let's go on and it is time for some trivia questions. So please see the polls, let us know again. If that happens again, like unmute yourself like you did, that was perfect to let us know. Are they up yet? The polls, I'm launching it right now. Okay, yeah. can everyone see that? And remember, these are, it's just for fun, don't overthink it. Go with your gut, your first instinct for the answer. I guess I see it if I click on the bottom. Mm -hmm. I will not answer the poll. Are the answers coming in? Should be pretty fast. True, false. We've had one answer. Don't overthink them, y'all. We'll we'll talk about all the all of these. We just have to test your foreknowledge and check with Aster to see what you've learned. And we have some good answers coming in. Here. I think we're tripping them up. Is it doing good? I still don't see the I don't see the poll or the results. So we have some good trick questions sprinkled in there. So. Yeah, yeah, we we definitely tried to trick you. That was on purpose. We apologize. It was on purpose. That makes it more fun. We can't make it easy and have you get them all. No. All right, we're just waiting on a few more. So we'll give you thirty more seconds. Okay. That probably wasn't 30 seconds. Um, it, it doesn't look like any more are coming in, so. Okay, you know. maybe someone's having some technological issues. Okay, let's see what happens when I share the results here. So what we're gonna, oh. Oh yeah, let's see if we can see them. Can you see the results? I don't, do you guys see the results? Yes? Yes. Oh, you do? Oh. I guess I'm the only one who doesn't see them. <laughs> the presenter doesn't get to see. Fine. Well, we had some interesting answers. Um, do you want me to go through those? Sure. Okay, so the first question was if popcorn is in the grain food group and 100% answered false. Oh, you'll find out in a second. <laughs> um, for the question rice is in the vegetable group we had six people say true and four people say false. Okay. Find that one out too. Beans are in the protein food group. We had eight people say true and two people said false. Uh, yogurt is in the protein food group. We had three people say true and seven people say false. Mm -hmm. Yogurt is in the dairy food group. We had eight people say true and two said false. And then tomatoes are in the fruit food group. We were 50-50, so. That was about right. We all, y'all did good. And like we said, there was, a, there was a lot of trick questions in there or kind of tricky, like it, they're not obvious. So good job. And we're about to talk about all of them. So let's go back to this MyPlate image and look at grains. So you'll notice that the grains group, right, is slightly more than a quarter of your plate. Now. The important thing with the grains food group is to make half your grains whole grain. So we're already ready for a true-false question. Oh. Ah, go back, don't show them. 
<laughs> Lexi almost showed you the answers. Almost. If you. Those are just, just one, one question, Paul. One question. Here we go. Let me know when they've all got it. Okay. And Sheffy, while they're answering, do you want to see if there are any other participants waiting in the? Um, I'm letting them in as they pop up. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot of people coming in. Okay. How are they doing? They're doing well. We have 70% have answered. Okay. So I'll just give you a few more seconds just before the question. Don't overthink it. It's true or false. Good. All right. We'll stop it there. Yeah. So what was the what was the consensus? So 75% uh, of people said false. Refined and whole grains have the same nutrients. So good job. Awesome. And you, I know you got the question right, but some of you might have been like, we don't really know what refined grains or whole grains are, right? But they, they sound different. So that was, that was a good, good choice there. So let's take a look at what are these crazy terms we're saying and what is the difference? So a good example, a whole grain would be brown rice, right? And then the refined grain is white rice. Or we can think about flour. There's actually whole wheat flour you know, that's used to make whole grain breads or whole grain tortillas. And then there's white flour or all purpose flour. That's gonna be the refined grain. So it would be great if we could just say that all whole grains are brown and then the refined grains are white, but that's not necessarily the case. It's not just up to the color. So let's take a look at the whole grain. So you see that image on your screen. And the whole grain has three parts. It has the bran, the endosperm, and the germ. So the bran is that outer layer, and that's where all the fiber is. And then there's B vitamins and some minerals. That big part in the middle is called endosperm, and that's where you find carbohydrates, along with some protein and a little bit, some vitamins, but not many. And then that little, I'll say the little guy, I don't know why, the little guy at the bottom, the germ, that's super nutrient rich. And it's packed with B vitamins, it's vitamin B, it has something called phy phytochemicals, which fight diseases and healthy fats. So the whole grain has a lot going on, right? There's a lot of benefit for your body there. But when they refine a grain, they take away the bran and they take away the germ. So look at what you were left with. You've lost out on a lot, right? So you're really just left with carbohydrate and there's some protein and vitamins. And it's not to say that carbohydrates are not good for you. Our bodies need and want carbohydrates but your body really wants that grain in its whole grain form, so in that entirety. That, that way you get all the benefit of the grain. So all those different parts, let me tell you why they're important. So the bran with the fiber, right? Fiber helps to make us um, feel full. It's also really good for your like, intestinal health and stomach. The healthy fats that are found in a germ, same thing, they help to keep us full and they, they're great for our heart health and brain health. And then all those other vitamins and minerals that are taken out of the refined grain, they do a lot of important things. They help our nervous system stay healthy. They carry, help our blood carry nutrients throughout our body and they help our immune system. So that way we can stay well and not get sick, right? Which is super important in this day and age. We wanna remain healthy. So in general, healthy eating is important, but these whole grains really, really do well with that. So. To choose um, whole grains when you're shopping, you have to be very careful. So manufacturers, unfortunately, all those food companies, right? They kind of try to trick us in the grocery store and they'll advertise something as healthy or they're gonna call it wheat or maybe multi-grain, but it's not necessarily whole grains. You have to look for that word whole on the label. Now, it's great if it's on the front of a label, but okay, let me see, I know I have one right here. Do you see my pasta? I know I'm little right now because it's, oh, and I have my crazy white screen. But the actual word whole wheat is right here. So that's awesome. But an even better thing to do is flip it over, whatever you have, and go to the ingredients section. And that first grain ingredient, whatever it is, if it's wheat or oats or corn, you want it to say whole wheat. That way you know that it truly is a whole grain. So that's a very important thing to do.
So there are lots of different grains out there, whole wheat and non-whole wheat, but can anyone right now, what we'd like you to do is use that chat again and tell us some examples of whole grains. Do you know any other whole grains that I haven't talked about? It's okay if you're wrong too. Take a guess, we'll let you know. Wheat. Wheat, so whole wheat, mm-hmm, good. And whole and wheat looks like a lot of different things. It comes in a lot of forms. Did y'all know you can actually eat like wheat kernels? There's like wheat berries in the store and it's a whole grain that you can eat. That's something kind of different. Good. Oh, I see oats, very good. Oats are one of the kind of the easiest and most common whole grains to get, right? What someone, else do we have? Someone said rice. So it, it'll be a whole grain if it's brown rice. Yes. But white rice is not a whole grain. Anything else? Any other ideas? Peanut butter, that's a good guess. But peanut butter we'll talk about later. Peanut butter is in a different food group. Bread, okay, so I see bread. So bread can be, remember, it'd have to say whole grain bread, right? Or it could say whole wheat bread. If it's just bread or just, even if it just says wheat bread, that doesn't mean that it's whole grain. So we have to, Again, the food companies kind of try to trick you, so you have to be careful. Um, cereals is another common thing, right? When you're shopping for cereals, like a cold cereal you put milk over, you can find whole grain cereals too. In fact, they have made a lot of those like kid, popular kids cereals, they've converted to whole grain at this point. So a um, lot of different choices. Are there, is there anything else or should I, I was going to list off some more. You can lift, list off some more. Okay, so remember our true false quiz question, popcorn? Popcorn is a whole grain. Is that not great news? <laughs> so when you're eating popcorn, you're getting the benefits of whole grain. And that's one that a lot of people really don't think about. Um, let me think of some other examples. Y'all already said oatmeal, we said brown rice. Um, have you heard of barley or bulgur? What about quinoa? Quinoa is one that's kind of becoming more common out there. Oh, I see another comment, wheat bread. So again, if it says whole wheat bread or whole grain bread, but if it's wheat bread, it's not necessarily whole grain. So just always keep that in mind. There's really, I almost wanna say like endless whole grains out there. Um, if you really wanna explore, if you're going to the grocery store right now, I know with COVID, a lot of people aren't actually doing in-person grocery shopping, but if you are and you go to the store, you can go through like the grain aisle, like where you would find rice or oats or cereals and take a look and you'll start to notice there's all these different whole grains that people aren't even really aware of. Um, one of my favorites is actually called, and this is funny, it's one of my favorites, but I don't know the correct way to pronounce it. It's either farro or farro, but I love it. And you cook it kind of like brown rice and it has like a nice chewy texture and it looks like a, like a plump brown rice, I guess is the best way to describe it. So there's a lot of whole grains out there. Okay. So we have another trivia question. And for this one, Lexi is going to spotlight one of you, which means we're going to have you talk on camera and tell everyone the answer. So think back to our bean and cheese taco meal example. What was the grain source? And if you know the answer, hand. yeah, and Lexi will call on one of you. Bean and cheese taco. What was the grain? Y'all know this. Someone knows this. Don't be shy. Is there no one raising their hand, Lexi? No <laughs> one's raising their hand. I need someone to call on. Somebody, right? Is Griselda raising her hand or adjusting the camera? <laughs> I'm going to call on her. So it looks like she was raising her hand. Okay. What was her? No. A bean taco. A bean taco? So what was the grain in it? The tortilla. Yes, yay, very good. So the tortilla is the grain source, that's awesome. And of course with um, tacos, we can have wheat tortillas or we can also have corn tortillas, right? So the corn tortillas um, can be whole grain and then those, the wheat, like the flour tortillas, the traditional just like white ones, those aren't gonna be whole grain, but there actually is a whole grain tortilla, I know, um, 
when you're accustomed to the white flour tortilla, then you might be like, oh, I don't want to try that whole wheat tortilla. But I would tell you, if you can find some, like a grocery store that has the bakery that makes them, they taste delicious still. So something to consider. Otherwise, the corn tortillas are a good source of whole grain. Yay, good job, everyone. Okay, so now that we talked about, um, this is for a grade. Someone said this is for a grade. What's for a grade? <laughs> Hold on, guys, I'm just gonna change it back to gallery view so I can see all your faces. Okay, so we talked about the whole grains. Let's talk about refined grains again. So the refined grains are gonna be like white bread, white rice, the white tortillas, like I just said, crackers, white pasta. So to make these grains, they've essentially removed those things that are good for us, right? does not mean you can never eat these white refined grains. Remember, the goal is to make 50% of your grains whole grain. And of course, the more that you make whole grain, the better. But I would, we would never tell you you cannot eat a flour tortilla or you have cake for a celebration or, you know, a nice white French bread or wh whatever you like. The, the idea is try to just make most of your grains whole grains. Okay. Um, oh. And you might also be thinking, I get this question a lot too, like, well, if whole grains are so much better for us, then why do we refine them, right? Like, how did that ever get started? And I'll tell you, one of the main reasons is from a culinary perspective. So if we think about flour, that's probably the easiest one. Like, whole wheat flour is super dense. And if you wanted to make, like, think about like a really fluffy, light birthday cake or pastries, you're not really gonna get that like end result you're looking for. It's gonna be like heavy and dense and dark in color. So that's one reason why we refine grains, right? To have that, that ability to get a finer, lighter texture. And then the processing actually also extends shelf life. So when we think about like grains just sitting in a grocery store, if they're refined, so like the white flour lasts longer than the whole wheat flour. So that's kind of the, I'll say like the history behind it, why, why that started. Okay, so again, make half your grains, whole grain. Okay, we ready to go on to protein? Let's do it. So Lexi's gonna pull up the screen again, give you that image of my plate. Mm -hmm. And I know people are always shocked, like how is protein that little? Like shouldn't it take up more of the plate? And I'll tell you that most Americans eat way too much protein. Like there's no need to eat that much protein. It's kind of just like a misconception out there. So look at that portion of protein. It's slightly less than a quarter of your plate. Um, so let's do a chat. We want you right now to name, name some protein foods for us. It can be anything, any type of protein. Type it in the chat for us. Let's see what you, see what you got. Meat, good. Eggs, awesome. What else? Fish. Fish, good. I guess I only sometimes see the chat like pops up. Oh, that chicken. Directly. Chicken, good job. Good. Oh, ch several answers. Fruit does in the protein category. We'll talk about fruit in a little bit. Someone said peanut butter, good. Peanut butter does belong in the protein group. Cheese. Good. Cheese is a funny one. It kind of crosses between protein and dairy. Yes. Beans. Good job, Ava. Yeah. Tuna. Tuna. Nice. Very, very good. Um, okay. Okay. So protein is super important for us. It does a lot in our bodies. It helps with our nervous system. It helps form blood, builds muscle. That's the one you probably all know, right? It helps to make you strong. <laughs> builds bones, it makes your hair strong and also shiny, makes your nails, your nails and your teeth strong, helps give you a healthy immune system and it gives you energy. So that energy, right, you need to get through the day. Bologna, I just saw listed. So there are a lot of protein sources and y'all did really good naming some examples for us. So let's follow up with this true false question. And if you listened carefully to the chat results or read them you should get this right all right no pressure okay sam what are you doing <laughs> y'all see the question so again don't ever think it i'm tracking the time for us all right keep it up guys you're doing awesome
give you 10 more seconds. All right. What's, Good the, job. what's the verdict? So most of you got that right. Um, protein only comes from animal sources. You're right if you said false. So protein comes from other sources too. Good job. So, yeah, the so protein can come from animal sources and plant-based sources. So let's talk about those animal sources first. So when you're choosing animal proteins, it's a good idea to choose fish, chicken, turkey, and eggs. Fish, especially salmon or tuna, someone mentioned tuna earlier, or if you like sardines, those are especially good for us because they have these healthy fats that are vital for our heart health and they're really important for your brain development, especially when you're a kid and you're growing. So all, of, all good choices. Now with red meats, you see that ground beef right in the corner and processed meats, someone mentioned bologna as an example. Those meats we, we wanna limit. So red, let me clarify too, red meats would be like beef, goat, lamb, and pork. Don't get confused. Pork tries to advertise as the other white meat and it's a red meat. So just remember that. But those red meats, unfortunately, are higher in what's called saturated fat. And saturated fat is not good for our hearts. So we want to try to limit that. There's also a connection between um, high intake of red meat and those processed meats. So the processed meats are like deli meats, bologna, hot dogs, sausages. Those um, have been linked to cancer as well. So Again, we're not telling you never to eat them, right? But you should try to limit them. So try to focus on those healthier animal protein sources and then also incorporate some plant-based sources um, we're just about to talk about in a second. One more note on those, um, the red meats, if you are gonna buy red meat, so like beef, so like that ground beef in the corner, there's different fat percentages. So in the grocery store, you'll see like 80-20, right? But there's also 90-10. So 90-10 would be a better option because it has less saturated fat. I think I've even seen, there's even like 96-4. So try to choose those leaner cuts. And then honestly, for like big chunks of red meat, like a big stew meat or steaks, you can see the fat on it, right? So you can look at it and know what the leaner options are. Okay, so let's talk about plant-based proteins. A lot of people don't think about these. Like when we say protein, everyone's, you know, their minds go straight to the meat. And you don't actually have to have meat to get your protein. So we're big fans of plant-based proteins because they provide you with protein, but they also give you fiber and they give you all these vitamins and minerals that are associated with, you know, like fruits and vegetables. So they're great for um, keeping you well and healthy. And they're also just naturally low in saturated fat. So you'll see on our slide, we've got beans and lentils and nuts and seeds, tofu. I know that's probably a little bit crazier one for y'all. And something called chia seeds, which is a little different too. So we're going to do another spotlight now to raise your hand for us if you know the answer. In our bean and cheese taco example, what was the protein source? Raise your hand so Lexi can call on you. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, meat and cheese. Right. <laughs> Should I just spotlight someone? I'm, I'm the, the bean. Oh, I heard some. I see, yeah. The beans. Yay. I guess we don't have to do a spotlight. We got the answer. So, yeah, so beans were the protein source. So, the cool thing about beans is um, they can count as a protein or a vegetable. So, that's great, right? So, at your meal, if you could have that bean taco or you could have beans on the side and it'd be your vegetable if you had like a meat in your taco. So, just remember that. Okay. Let's move on to the dairy food group. So I know you've been hearing about the benefits of dairy since you were a young child, right? Dairy is full of calcium, which is good for your bones. I know you all know that. Um, strong bones are super important though if you wanna um, engage like in sports and physical activity. So calcium, calcium's a good thing to include in your diet. Many dairy products have also been fortified with vitamin D because that helps you, um, helps your body absorb the calcium. And there's also other minerals in dairy that are really good for your bone health. Now, Lexi kind of touched on this. Um, I think someone mentioned cheese for protein. So dairy also does contain protein. So even though it, you know, it's like in its own little cup on the side of my plate and it's a different food group, it still does provide you with protein. So the example that comes to mind for me is like, if you had a grilled cheese sandwich, that cheese in that sandwich, that's your protein for that meal, right? 
And then you just happen to also be getting the benefits of the dairy with that. So with dairy, you wanna choose low fat or fat free options. So with milk, that's gonna be like skim milk or 1%. And then with yogurt, it's gonna be like your non-fat or low fat options. Now, I will say with cheese, we are not fans of fat free or low fat cheese, um, especially from a culinary perspective. They just don't really cook very well. They don't melt well. So we would not encourage you to buy those. Instead, we say go for the full fat cheeses and just watch your intake. Uh, I hear it, see a question, is dairy like milk? Yeah, so milk is a great example of dairy. So yogurt, milk, and cheese, those are gonna be, um, I probably just gave away our next chat, so we'll skip that. <laughs> those, those are examples of dairy. Um, so let's go ahead, I guess, to the spotlight question, since I, I already gave the answer. You're gonna have y'all give examples of dairy, and I jumped, I jumped ahead on that. But what was the source of dairy in our bean and cheese taco example? Should be an easy one. All right. It doesn't look like I can. The cheese. Ava, cheese. Good. I got. I heard several several responses. The cheese. Yes. Perfect. Um. One, well, two last notes on dairy. So, Greek yogurt and cottage cheese are fun because they are extra high in protein. So if you are trying to, you know, just use your dairy as a protein at a meal, those are really two good choices. And then I wanted to touch on ice cream because everyone wants to know, well, isn't ice cream part of the dairy group? And yes, it is. Ice cream is part of the dairy food group, but it's loaded with sugar. So this shouldn't be like your main source of dairy. So no eating ice cream all the time at every meal and saying, I'm getting my dairy in. It really is what we call a sometimes food. So it should be a treat, not something that you eat all the time or every day. Okay, let's move on to fruits and vegetables. I'm a little behind on time, trying to speed up some. And fruits and vegetables, we're gonna talk a lot more about in upcoming lessons. But the big takeaway we want you to um, learn today is that you truly need to cover half your plate in fruits and vegetables at every meal. Remember, so like at breakfast time, that might be half your plate in fruit. Um, lunch and dinner might be the fruit and vegetables, but regardless, half your plate. This is so important for your health. Now with fruits and vegetables, the more variety, the better. And the great thing is that nature has a way of telling us how to vary our fruits and vegetables, and that's through the color. So all those different colors provide us with different vitamins and minerals. So it makes it really easy for us. Fruits and vegetables do so much for our bodies. They actually help with strong bones, something that people don't think about. Um, those dark greens even have calcium in them. They help keep our eyes, skin, and blood healthy. Fruits and vegetables help, help heal cuts and bruises. They promote strong immune system and they help fight and prevent diseases. Um, just like the common cold or the flu, but also those really bad diseases like type two diabetes, heart disease, and cancer. So it's very important to try to eat a variety. So what we thought we would do now is we're gonna go back to the chat box and we're gonna look at those different colors and have y'all list examples of different colors um, based on the, so I'll name a color and then you list different fruits and vegetables that are that color and try not to repeat, right? So if you see someone already type in honeydew, then don't also type honeydew, okay? So let's start with green fruits and vegetables. And Lexi, as they type them, you just wanna read them out? Yeah. Okay, take about 10 seconds. Think of as many green fruits and vegetables as you can. Green beans, broccoli. Good. Good, good. Lettuce, avocado, kale. Ooh, good responses. Celery. Awesome. Tomato, if it's a green tomato, yeah. It could be, or a tomatillo. A tomatillo would be green. Yep. Um, carrots are not a green one. We'll get to that color, though. Bell pepper, spinach. No, I see. Spinach. Okay, let's stop with green. Those were all really good responses. Something to keep in mind with the, the green um, vegetables is that those really dark leafy greens and then um, broccoli are... I'm going to say like even extra important for our health because they are so rich in vitamins and minerals. So really try to eat your broccoli or spinach or we saw someone list kale, which is awesome. Those are all very, very, very healthy, super rich in nutrition. Okay, let's go to our next color. We're actually going to group two colors together, yellow and orange. 
So name as many fruits and vegetables that are yellow and orange as you can. Squash, good job. Bananas, melon. Good, yeah, cantaloupe. Actually, there's a lot of melons that are yellow. Yeah, yeah, carrots are in our orange category. Bell pepper, lemons, orange. Apples, some can be yellow. Awesome. Okay. You know what, for the sake of time, I'm gonna go through the different colors and give you all some examples so we can move on because I don't wanna run out of time. But other color groups to think about would be red. So that'd be like tomatoes, um, raspberries, watermelons, strawberries. We have blue and purple fruits and vegetables. So eggplant, blueberries, um, blackberries, beets, red onion. And then um, there's even, you can even consider like white as a color group. So cauliflower, I think, I feel like someone typed that earlier. Onions, garlic. Those are all good options. Now, one note on potatoes. So potatoes tend to get a pretty bad, um, pretty bad rep, but they really can be healthy. What it comes down to is how they're prepared. So if you dice up potatoes and toss them with some oil, salt, and pepper and roast them in the oven and you eat that skin on there, it's super nutritious. It's when you convert them and cook them into French fries and tater tots and potato chips that have been deep fried, they're really not healthy for us anymore. I know in the summer, and we're not saying you can't eat them. We're just saying if you're going to have like French fries or potato chips mm -hmm. at your meal, make sure that's not your only vegetable, okay? You'll want to also have like broccoli in there or some other vegetable. So the, the little handful of fries or chips or whatever is kind of just like an extra. Another note for juice, you really need to limit your juice to just one cup a day. And when I say cup, I mean like this size. So this is truly like an eight ounce cup, not this. And I know when you, especially if you go to like a restaurant or something, like the juice definitely comes in a cup this big. So eight ounces is really the limit. Okay, so back to our bean and cheese taco. Which foods were the fruit and vegetable sources? You can just shout them out if you know yeah, the Yeah, I just shout them out. Someone said watermelon in the chat box. Yep, that was our fruit source. What were our veggie sources? Oh, I heard someone say it. Someone said the salad, that was our veggie. And there was one hiding on the taco too. Did anyone see it? It's kind of tricky. Hey, right? Tomatoes. The tomatoes. I said tomatoes, but you said oh, cilantro. Cilantro would be another veggie on there, yep. Awesome. The salsa. So the salsa counts as a vegetable. Yay. Yay. <laughs> or actually a fruit. Depends what's in your salsa. We'll talk more about fruits and vegetables soon in the upcoming lessons. Okay, so let's go on and talk real quick about healthy fats. So remember, healthy fats were not shown on my plate, but they were in the healthy Harvard eating plate. So the goal fats choose the plant-based ones. Um, so those are going to be your oils, the ones that are liquid at room temperature versus solid fats like butter or lard or shortening. The solid fats are high saturated fat, which is that fat that's bad for our heart. Now with the liquid, the liquid oils, there's some that are better than others, meaning they have um, more beneficial fats in them. So canola oil and extra virgin olive oil are gonna be your best choices and best for your health. The healthy fats are also found in nuts and seeds and fatty fish and avocados. Okay, water was the other thing that was not shown on my plate, but is on this healthy eating plate. And Water is super important for you to be drinking throughout the day and at your meals. For your age, it's recommended that you actually drink nine to 10 cups of water. But that need does need to increase if you're involved in any sports or if you're just outdoors in our crazy over 100 degree weather, right? You need to think about that. Okay, let's go on to portion sizes. Lexi, I'm running out of time. No. <laughs> so with our portion sizes, um, I'm gonna show you some plates. So my plate, right, is a really good guide on how to, you know, like plan your meals. But if I'm working with a little plate like this, I'm obviously not going to be eating enough. And if I have like a giant plate, oh, that's disappearing here. If I have a giant plate, your portions are going to be too big. So what you're really going for is just like a medium-sized plate that's about eight to nine inches. And 
we were going to have you go do a scavenger hunt, but we are not going to have time. I want to end with um, just a, one, a game that we can do real quick at the end. But there's some visuals out there that you can use to guide you on your portion sizes. So this chart right here shows what you should be eating for your age group. So vegetables, you should get two and a half cups a day. So examples of portion sizes, one cup of raw vegetables counts as one cup of veggies. Um, one cup of cooked is cooked. The weird one is leafy greens. You have to eat two cups to count as one cup. And that's just because they're like, they're light and kind of voluminous. So you need to eat more. But a good visual to keep in mind is a baseball. I didn't have a baseball, but I have um, this little toy. <laughs> bowling ball that's kind of the size of a baseball. So that'd be about one cup of vegetables. For fruits, you wanna get one and a half to two cups a day. And you'll see the examples there of the portion sizes, but a good visual to keep in mind is a tennis ball. So a tennis ball is about one medium apple, which would be slightly more than a cup of fruit. Protein sounds weird. So it says you should eat five to six ounce equivalents. Probably like, what is an ounce equivalent? So with meats, that's literally like one ounce by weight. And a reasonable portion size for that would be three ounces. So like a deck of cards is going to be a three ounce portion of meat. When you think about like chicken breast in the grocery store now, right? They're like more than double this. So this is all you need, just three ounces. A ping pong ball would be about two tablespoons of nut butter. And one tablespoon is going to be like a one ounce equivalent. So you'd be getting two ounces of protein if you have two tablespoons of nut butter. You can also get a quarter cup of beans is one ounce, one egg is one ounce, and then half an ounce of nuts or seeds actually counts as one ounce of protein because it's so nutrient dense. And there's one egg, Lexi had. <laughs> okay, so with grains, grains are also in those ounce equivalents. Um, so like one piece of bread is going to be an ounce equivalent. So is one small tortilla, one cup of dry cereal, and then only half a cup of cooked rice, pasta, or oats counts as an ounce equivalent. And that tennis ball, again, my fake tennis ball, this would be about half cup. So if you're, you know, filling your plate and you're like, okay, I need about half cup, think of a tennis ball in your head. The last thing up there is dairy. So you need three cups a day. And that could be one cup of milk, one cup of yogurt, or one string cheese. Those are all equate um equates like one cup you also have oh no i lost my oh here it is a dice so if you took three of these that would be about one ounce to one and a half ounces of cheese which i know like this looks like nothing right pretty small portion size okay so that's portion sizes we just want to go over the key points and then i want to play the game one game really fast with y'all because we ran out of time. So key takeaways for this lesson, make at least half of your grains whole grains, choose lean proteins and choose nuts, seeds and beans more often. Don't forget about those plant-based sources. Choose low fat dairy for healthy bones, make half your plate fruits and vegetables. Okay, so we do need to do that post quiz, right? Real quick. And then we'll take whatever remaining time. So we're only gonna give you like one minute for that post quiz because we wanna do this at least one activity with you. Okay. Uh, here we go. Okay. So get that answered. Or you know what, Lexi, we can give them one minute and we can just go ahead and start the activity while some of them are still answering it. Sorry, say that again. Oh, I said, um, we can give them a minute and then we can go ahead and start that activity just so For we sure. can get some done. Um, for those of you who are wanting to get credit, just while you're f finishing this poll, for those of you who are wanting to get credit for today's course, you can either uh, decorate a my plate or um, complete the scavenger hunt. And if you stay on for a little bit longer, we'll tell you those rules. Um, and then take a picture of those items that you found and then send it to the Yes Dolls email. Those are instructions from Whitney. Okay, great. Awesome, thank you. Okay, can we end with our last activity? Yes. Okay, so we're gonna play a game. We're gonna show you a food and we want you to tell us what food group it belongs to but you're not gonna write it, you are gonna do some actions for us. So if it's in the dairy food group, we want you to duck. If it's in the protein food group, we want you to punch. 
If it's in the grains, we want you to go golfing. <laughs> fruit. Oh, sorry. And duck. You should do this for duck. If it's fruit, you're going to fall. And then vegetable, you're going to vote. Okay? I just put those instructions in the chat if you forgot. We have about like two minutes, so we're going to go fast. So I'm going to show the first one. So I have whole grain pasta. I guess we need to see you on the screen in order to participate. We got some golfers here. Oh, got to see your, you got to see your camera. We got some golfers. Yep. Yay, good job guys. So pasta is in the grain group. Okay, Lexi, you got one or you want me to keep going? I got one. We got an apple here. I just picked this from my front yard. Oh, I see some fallers. Fall off your screen. For fruit. <laughs> okay. Good, okay. What about popcorn? Y'all remember, what's popcorn? Punch. No. Not punching. This one was kind of tricky. Popcorn, do we remember? Golfing. We got to see you go golfing. Remember, popcorn is a whole grain, which is awesome because we all have popcorn, right? Okay, Lexi, your turn. All right, an egg here. What's an egg? We got some punchers. I see some punching going on. Good. Egg is in the protein group. Awesome. Okay. Y'all know what these are? Sorry, my crazy screen. Lentils. These are some red split lentils. What food group? Yeah, I see some punching. Woo! It's a plant-based protein source. Good job, y'all. Okay. I've got a squash. What do we think a squash is? Oh, we have a voter. Someone voted. Yay! Yay! It's a vegetable. Good okay. job. What about this? Do y'all know what this is? An okra. What food group is okra in? I see some voting. Good. Okra is a vegetable. Awesome. Good job. Okay, I have a big jar of brown rice here. What's brown rice? Not punchy, not protein. Brown rice. Oh, we have a golfer. Yay, golfer, it's a grain. Okay, last one, so then we'll explain the my plate that we didn't get to, that y'all get to do for credit. Yogurt. And I do have whole milk yogurt, but that's because I have young children. So I have a 19 month old who needs whole milk. What are you supposed to do? I see it, I see some ducking. Remember duck, it's dairy. Yay! Good job, y'all. Okay, so but what we didn't get to, remember the plate you drew? We wanted you to plan a healthy meal on this. So you could draw pictures, right, of different grain, healthy whole grains, lean proteins, fruits, vegetables, and your dairy source, and create a healthy meal. So that was what we didn't get to. You can definitely do that on your own. Mm -hmm. Does that have to be Lexi, or do they need to take pictures of a real meal? Chef B, this yeah. is Whitney. This yeah. is um, those who are going to later watch this as a recording that weren't able to attend today. They're the only ones that will need to take the picture and send it in. So if you can make sure okay. that you understand that, and I'll put it in an email to them. But for those who are watching later, they'll do the My Plate. That's an option. Or you can also describe the scavenger hunt, and they can do that. Oh, OK, gotcha. OK, so for the scavenger hunt, if Lexi, do you want to pull that up again, the portion sizes? Yes. Go find that. You can find the items that are in the right column that represent those different portion sizes. So like a baseball, a tennis ball, we had some dice, all those different things that are good visuals for portion sizes. Awesome. So collect those. And I guess, Whitney, they, they would just take a picture of what they found. Or Lexi, do you have that note? Um, let's see if I can find this note. Yes, they would take a oh, picture yeah. and um, send it in. And I'm going to send it via email, but I just wanted to make sure that they have that on there. They could look at it later. OK, awesome. Well, thank y'all. If you have any additional questions and you want to just like type in the box real quick, we'd be happy to answer them. But otherwise, thank you so much for coming. So Lexi, did you have something? Before we go, can we ask them about meeting times? Oh, yeah, go ahead and do that. You have a poll. 
Yes. Okay, so that's what we're gonna, <laughs> that's what we wanted to do. We wanna see what the best day and time is for y'all. So before you leave, if you could complete this poll for us, so that way we can choose the day and time that works best for your schedule. And we'll be faster next time so we get through the activities. I tend to be long-winded. <laughs> <laughs> And check as many as work for you. Yes, you don't have to like just choose one. Like please check all of the ones that work. And then if you have any questions, like I said, enter them in the chat. Otherwise we're done. It was great you seeing your faces. Yeah, thanks for coming to the first class. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye. 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 <laughs> I feel like how everyone like disappears one by one. <laughs> one more. Making sure there's no question. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> oh, I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna move her out because I didn't know what to do. Whoa, um, that went way faster than I. I'm gonna stop recording. Yes. <laughs>